Welcome to The Daily Dose. This is Helen Lucero de Mogalski. Hey, what's going on? It's Zach. And we have a very special version of The Daily Dose for you tonight. That's right. It's just me and Helmut right now. It might seem like a pretty normal episode of The Daily Dose, but we have a surprise. Hey, hey dolls. dolls. Hey. A dash of lesbian. Discover unexpected recipes for growth and love by exploring all the flavors of the rainbow. Welcome home, dolls. So this is a very special edition. We're going to run, I think, six of these during um, during our season two. And this is a Dash of Lesbian. And a little bit of background on this, um, as we were sort of thinking about what we really wanted to do differently with uh, the Gaily Dose this season, was start to incorporate more members of the Rainbow community. And what better people to start with than these wonderful friends of mine, these lovely ladies. And I will remind you that today's episode is sponsored, like every episode, by AHF. AHF is the best place to go to get all your gay healthcare needs met. Go to ahf.org. That's right. And also, if you have any marketing inquiries, hit us up at marketing at the dose.com. Thank you. I, um, I was going to ask, actually, our ladies to give us a little bit of background so that you dolls can get to know them a little bit better. Hello, hello, dolls. I'm Tiana. Um, I am a mother of four. I'm also married to this beautiful woman right here. <laughs> And we go by the Clays. We also have a business, Modern the Clay LLC. Uh, we have several businesses up under that name. And I am definitely a proud and excited to be a part of this Gaily Dose podcast. Girl, I had oh. no idea you had four kids. I do. Yeah. The Gaily Dose podcast, <laughs> the dash of lesbian. Dash of lesbian. There you go. <laughs> yes, and you're also, aren't you really involved with Atlanta Black Pride? I am, yes. I oh, am I on the that. board. I'm on the board of Atlanta Black Pride. Yes, oh, that, this is my first year. Year, you guys so I am super excited about that I have so many great ideas and I cannot wait to get started well, I'll wait be there for it. another big awesome. you. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. proud of you thank you baby <laughs> what's going on dolls my name is clay and I am a woman fanatic I love 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 women <laughs> that's why I married this beautiful woman right here um, like my wife said, we have four kids. Um, they are my bosses. I work for them. I work for my wife. They're the boss of me. Um, I have a mold in the clay interior design and handyman services. That is my passion. I love, love, love to work with my hands and turn some, nothing into something. Uh, I'm just excited to be here at the Daily Dose, um, a dash of lesbians. And I'm looking forward to bringing you guys in ma amazing topics. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Molding yeah. the clay. That's I love. That's yeah. what a cute name. Yeah, that was actually that, our, that hashtag. Was our hashtag for our really? wedding. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, we took it to another level. <laughs> Very creative. Now, when am I going to get to see you in a tool belt? Is that going to happen on one of these episodes? I, I don't know. Yes. We, have, we have pictures yes. of this. Well, so actually, I, I need KK to get pictures of me in the tool belt with yeah. some Timberland boots on, just I like think this. I need that. Yep. For Valentine's Day. Class. Yes. <laughs> I think, I think Valentine's. we should all share the same outfit. Yes. Honestly. Yes. Yes. That would be so cute. I love it. Well, I'm so glad to be here, dolls. My name is Catherine, and I'm a recent transplant to Atlanta. Was lucky enough to meet this wonderful queen at the infamous Sunday party, Shaka Khan. Yes. Oh, that's where y'all met. That's where we met. We discussed all things magical, mystical, and had a great connect. And when I realized um, that you were having these incredible conversations with the community, it was such a gift to be invited to be a part of this, this group. And um, as a professional, I've been a photographer for many years. I have both my portrait business, Kevin Kruger Photography, and I also specialize in boudoir photography oh. under the business name Creatrix Boudoir. So, oh, awesome. yes. yes. I need Love that, that. shoot. Yes. Uh -huh. I need that shoot. Yeah, it is, it is hot, it is spicy. Do you do men? Yeah. Oh, everybody. <laughs> this is a business for all to find their high self, their best self, reconnect mm. with your body, and then I have really found clients have the experience of building massive confidence and then everything around them just sort of transforms to that new energy that they're putting out and it's really wonderful to get to have so many people come and just find their best self that is that's amazing amazing yeah, it is. I love well that. i think he already said it but 
I want to be the second to welcome you all three to the cast. Thank, Thank you. We are too Thank excited you. to have Thank you guys. Thank you. We're so, excited to be here. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So excited. So just so y'all know, I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> no, I, not. Hate, not. Hate, but. I hate to break the news, but all the gays call me the lesbian of the group because I love flannels. Sw- flannels. <laughs> yeah. I love swinging a hammer. Okay. I love designing. Mm-hmm. I love the Building. tool belt. Yes. Yes. I will yes. borrow your, t- your tool belt. Any day. Okay. Um, I also started my own design business. I only do the designs. So okay. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I've renovated some some rooms before, but I feel like the design is what I love. Okay. So yeah. my, I specialize yeah. mostly in kitchen Excellent. baths, so we probably need to talk. Yeah. Yeah. But mine is uh, Schneider Design. I think I follow y'all, your, really? um, your business. On, okay. on I think you do too, yeah. So so I'm so excited to be here on your inaugural <laughs> episode. <laughs> Inaugural was one of the words I really screwed up on our very on first, the first episode. episode. <laughs> the, the dose and he was ever. like, "We're gonna take it out." Yeah. And then we were like, "No, it's no. so funny." Inaugural. <laughs> it, it, he was like, <laughs> "Yeah, he literally inaugural." <laughs> but you know, one of the things that's so great about the Gaily Dose and particularly Dash a Lesbian is this energy thing that has happened and has created this. I mm. walked into Atlanta Black Pride, my first Atlanta Black Pride event, <laughs> met these two wonderful humans, yeah. connected mm. immediately. Yes. And uh, you were by yourself. I was. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah. And I walk. saw them talking, and I walked by. I was like, "Who is this? My wife talking to? She <laughs> always making a friend." <laughs> yeah, that, that is awesome. Yeah, and you know, when we first started the Gaily Dose, you know, we had the conversation about like we want to include the rest of the rainbow in it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. we also realized that we were for gay men. Yeah. You know, and we didn't know, uh, we didn't yet know how to bring the rest of the rainbow in. So I'm glad we figured it out. We yeah. found these yeah. three amazing yeah. people. So one of the things that's interesting, right, about the whole thing is being in uncomfortable spaces, right? You kind of have to trust that things are moving right. I walk mm-hmm. into Atlanta Black Pride. Mm-hmm. I literally was like, something is going to happen important here. I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And it was right. meeting you. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. 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 And then when I met you, it was literally just like, not just fellow Texan, because that can be a, a good or bad guy, <laughs> but it was just... Just an energy thing yeah. and I was like this is gonna somehow mean something and it has mm-hmm. and these ladies have also taught us a lot um, in this entire experience uh, really quite a bit um, and so we have very specific segments that the ladies have crafted for uh, for you dolls to listen to so I thought I'd let them explain that a little bit yes yeah, so our first segment is gonna be it's called sister circle it's where we us ladies get together we talk about a lot of different talk topics like I mean just regular girl talk we just sit around have conversation maybe a glass of wine or two and just go into like like we're having a little girls night so it's gonna be pretty good your own little kiki our yeah. little kiki without us boys without us boys yeah. girls only yes and we also have a segment that is called Pillow Talk. Now, this is a more intimate segment for the grown and sexy only. <laughs> so it'll be my wife and I. We're going to expose you to our bedroom and some of the intimate, private conversations that we have, hoping to shed some light on a few situations that can occur in relationships. So that's definitely going to be fun. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Yes. yes. Very transparent. Under, can you talk with your heads under a pillow? Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very transparent <laughs> conversations, by the way. Absolutely. So. I love it. And I'll be leading y'all through a segment called Metaphysical Moment. We will be using tarot cards, intuition, crystals. We'll be talking about all of it to tap into the energy of that month, that season, and get some really encouraging messages for um, each and every one of you that's hopefully going to take you through to our next episode. I was going to say, don't forget those stones oh and minerals. Yes. <laughs> Which one's my favorite? Pyrite. Pyrite. It's so cute. Pyrite. Really anyone that's just like firm and hard I think is then what you've said is your favorite firm and hard is perfect Mm -hmm. we have a segment that's going to be called this girl is on fire (laughs) this girl is on fire (laughs) now this is my all time favorite segment this is where we are going to be recognizing and honoring someone in the LGBT community, community preferably a lesbian woman um, that is doing something awesome within the community. We just want to take that time to recognize the awesomeness that they're doing. So that's going to be my favorite segment. It's yeah. great. Yeah. It, 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 par- it parallels with our human heart on that we do on.
Daily Dose, so that's pretty cool. But what also is just a rip and repeat from the Daily Dose is our Doctor Dose. It's one of our favorite segments that we're gonna actually gift to y'all as <laughs> as your seg as your segment to kind of take over and do as Thank you will you. with it. Of course, of Appreciate course, it. where we have our listeners call in, and this is gonna be great because we have a whole nother perspective to think about when we think about lesbians on the lesbian side. So I'm excited to see what kind of questions you're asked. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we are excited. We we love your feedback. Uh, please feel free to give it to us on any of our social media outlets or uh, email us at feedback at thegaylitos.com. So here we go. Let's do it. Tarot and crystals and stars. Oh my, it's a metaphysical moment. Hi dolls and welcome to Metaphysical Moment with Madam KK. We're going to do a tarot poll and look at the energy that's going to bring us closer to our highest selves in 2022 but let's start by getting everything clean and clear and lighting some incense okay dolls i like to start with a quick cleansing of any deck we're going to cleanse this deck of all negative stagnant energies and we set the vibration to this reading for the collective audience of the Gaily Dose and a dash of lesbian. Going into 2022, we have some wild energies at play here. The North Node just switched into Taurus, and we are about to have a time that is full of increase. Taurus is about sensuality, everything you can taste, see, touch, take in. And it's a really beautiful, sexy, fun, honestly, mature. And as we step into this new energy, um, we are asking the universe, what energy is going to help the dolls find and connect to their highest self and bring them into the abundance, success, and joy that they're longing for for this year? All right, here we go. King of Cups. Y'all, what a beautiful message from the universe. Whether you are a spiritual soul, a person of faith, or just here doing the next right thing, this message is for you. And we are being given wisdom that, hey, the thing that's going to bring us to our highest self in 2022 is connecting to our emotions. Cups are the suit of emotion. And on the heels of this Cancer Full Moon, this is such an aligned message. My recommendation is that you take a moment and you look at how you ended 2021. How are you feeling at the end of that year? What did you do well? What broke your heart? What lit you up? And let's connect to that, feel into it, and let it guide us into 2022. Really look at your desires for the year and get in touch with how you want to feel when you achieve the things you desire. That's going to be your true north leading you into um, everything that you're calling in for this beautiful next 12 months. And to close our metaphysical moment, let me leave y'all with just a little self-care tip to take some action on this reading. King of Cups, get some pen and paper. Let's write a poem. You can write a song. Anything that taps into that emotional body, your desires, um, feelings, something of that sort is going to take you into a place of self-love that is the source for 2022's joy and manifesting everything you're hoping and dreaming for. Thank y'all for joining me in the metaphysical moment with Madam KK. Love you dolls. This girl is on fire. This segment, we want to recognize our girl on fire. Yes. This is a very, very awesome segment in which we want to recognize a pioneer who's in the LGBT community. Yes. And that person is Amber. Amber Moore. Amber Moore. She is the vice president of Atlanta Black Pride. And she 
does some amazing things in the community. When I tell you guys, Amber is phenomenal. Amber has never, ever met a stranger. Ever. She is going to greet you when she walk in the room. Mm -hmm. She's going to find out your passion and what you, what you want to do in life. And she is going to connect you with the right people. Absolutely. And she's so supportive. Like she will go above and beyond to make sure that you're good. She's going to call and check on you. She's going to send you a text. I mean, just her energy when you're around her is so refreshing. You know, I, I think when we first met her, mm -hmm. it was just like an instant connection. Mm -hmm. Like she instantly became big bro, you know. Yeah. And she, I mean, she does so much, you know, and being on the board with her in Atlanta Black Pride, um, it has taught me so much. Um, just being able to work next to her, working side by side with her, it has been a blessing. It has been an experience. Mm -hmm. It has been a lot of fun. Um, just being with, around her energy um, has been everything to me. And um, just her connecting yeah. to us. That's the biggest thing. I was going to say, not only does Amber have a great heart and a passion for people, especially in the LGBTQIA community, mm. but I also label her as the connector. Yeah. She is phenomenal with connecting you to other people whom you need to be connected to. Yeah. So if you have a business, if it's something that you're doing, or if you have a passion with doing something and Amber knows, she is constantly connecting you with people in that area to help mm. take you to that next level. Yeah, she definitely is. And she's very informative too. Mm -hmm. Like she knows Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like she knows everybody in the city. Like if yeah. you want to know anything about anything or anybody, call, call Amber. Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's just an amazing person. She I mean, is. it's you. I've never met. Anybody like her, really, mm -hmm. outside of you, baby. Yeah. Because, like, you're a sweet person. Like, you give your all to people. And meeting Amber, that was like, wow. I yeah. mean, you just, you can't ask for anything um, better. And, Dials, guess what? Amber Moore is single, single and she is looking for her unicorn. And she is. She has made that loud and clear. Yes. Yes, she is. So, ladies, make sure if you say anything and, come and you know, approach her, make sure you come correct, honey. Because, no, you need to come giving. So, Amber Moore, we want to say thank you thank for you. your service to our LGBTQIA community. Thank you for being who you are. And most of all, Thanking you for being that girl who yes. is on fire. fire. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about what the heck's going on here, which is really <laughs> gays and lesbians spending some quality time together. And really, this is part of the premise of the entire reason we brought the Dash on board. I'm going to ask you all, first off, gays and lesbians, we don't often hang out. Sometimes we do. Why do you think it is that we don't hang out as much as we could? I, I think it has a lot to do with us being in the same places. I don't think we're really in the, the same places with each other. Our club scene is different. Mm, that's true. You know, we yeah. have lesbian clubs that we go to because we're trying to be around lesbians. We want to meet other lesbians, you yeah. know. So I think that's part of the reason, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think it's all for, for social purposes. Um, a lot of there's a lot of single people here in Atlanta. And I think that when you go out on the social scene, you're going out to find a companion. You're going out yeah. to meet uh, people of the same sex. And you're not going to go somewhere where lesbians hang out and you're not going to go somewhere where gay, gays hang out if you're trying to introduce yourself to someone new. So that could be a reason as to why as well. It's hookups. People want to hook up and you are not going to find a lady to get down with at, you know, but, but that's true. But like what, what's so disheartening to me is why do we have to segment the LGBTQ community so much that we aren't together? Right. right. So like right. if we went, let's say, let's say future was just a dance club. Mm -hmm. Lesbians and gays went. Why is that not a thing? I don't know, but it should be. Right? It should. It really should be. Because, like, for me, me being a married woman, I just feel like 
for the most part, I don't, I'm not looking for anybody. I'm just looking for friends, a great crowd of people to be around, whether it's male or female. So for me, I can be around gay men and have a really, really good time. So I don't know if it's like that for, you know, all the lesbians out there, but for the most part, I don't, you know. Well, and I, you know, I, I'll even take some, you know, I, I've noticed a lot of the time, sometimes doesn't matter if they're gay, straight, a lot of gay men sometimes are aggressive towards women. And mm. that's something that I just don't understand sometimes. Mm. Have you guys ever come in contact with that? Well, it feels intimidating. If I like the times that I've gone, especially to an after hours uh, mostly uh, gay uh, yeah. club, it's like, what am I gonna do? Walk up to this shirtless man in a jock strap and be like, so do you <laughs> like do to you get like coffee <laughs> or <laughs> do you eat at all or <laughs> 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 it's a thing for you sometimes? Like your butt it looks so great, but it's it's a very strange and intense environment mm. to try to have if it's not gonna be a sexual moment, if it's gonna be a friend moment, even the fact that the norm is to be outrageously overtly sexual mm -hmm. makes it kind of an interesting scene to try to approach somebody if you're not there with people you know mm. who already are gonna do that initial introduction. And it's like I guess I'm just going to stay with my, you know, flannel yeah. lesbian yeah. friends over here. Yeah. See, I've yeah. always had a different experience when it comes to gays. Um, I think because I'm more a masculine mm -hmm. presenting. Mm -hmm. um, when you see me, I've always had an issue with gays trying to hit on me. <laughs> and I'm usually running around the club like, oh, no, I'm okay. <laughs> but I've always had great energy when yeah. it came to gay males. Mm -hmm. I've never had an issue um, with gay males at all. So yeah. I, I wish it could be that way all, all the across time. the board. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. I do think, so the, the hunt, the hunt's everything, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it seems like it's everything for a lot of us when we go out, right? Yeah. But we really are hunting for two things. Right. We're hunting for a sexual partner, yep. right? Or mm -hmm. a partner, depending on who you are. And then we are also hunting for friendships mm -hmm. and yeah. connections, yeah. right? And I think yeah. that's the part mm -hmm. where you're kind of, what I realized doing the Gaily Dose was that a lot of your backgrounds are just like our backgrounds. Yes, yes. Family alienation, mm -hmm. religion. religious issues, religion. Uh, cheating partners, spousal abuse. Mm -hmm. Like it's so similar, yeah, yeah. but we kind of section our small communities yeah. away. And it's not like I'm asking like, straight men and gay men to hang out like in a club because that could get confusing yeah, right yeah. Yeah. it's like right. but i know but i'm not gonna be hitting on you <laughs> right. you're not gonna yeah. be hitting right. on you know right. what i mean right like yeah. so like why is that why is that such a divide so i'm like maybe that's the re part of the reason we started this we don't have to figure yeah. it at all out yeah yeah <laughs> we have to figure it out do some investigating that's right that's right we'll bring some experts on yeah <laughs> well we're the experts ladies yeah. <laughs> we are. We are. we're gonna go to the club yeah, let's go. Yeah. Well, and what are what? Oh, so that's part of it, right? So what 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 do we actually do? Like, I actually took the time to like, like actually wish for the right lesbian to come in my life. My friend Taylor came into my life, and with her then came more. You mm -hmm. said intention. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. You're looking for it. You basically right. put those goggles on. It's that yeah. thing of how many times in a day do you see a red car? Well, if you're not thinking about a red car. Who knows how many you maybe saw. Well, we just yeah, talked about right? this. Yeah. We just talked about this That's on the Gaily so Dose true. where I was like, well, I don't see a lot of black people at the after hours. And Dante was like, you must not be looking for it because right. there, there are plenty. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting. setting that Good intention. Point. And yeah. all of a sudden you may be surprised that your new best friend or like one of the best connections you have ever made is right there. But it's just you were looking for it in the wrong lane. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like there's a word for this. Mm -hmm. Open is it openness or is it acceptance? Acceptance, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah because like I, right I was word. not expecting at all at Atlanta Black Pride to meet Hell. Yeah. yeah, until he yeah. walked in the room and he just walked in the room with a ball of energy. I said, "Who is this handsome man?" And she's attracted and, to a ball of energy. Yeah, he, yeah. he <laughs> came straight to me and we just started talking and we. Which is so funny that you're attracted to a ball of energy because yeah. you were so chill, like, yeah. like all the time. <laughs> like, like I, you can tell you have energy, but you are like. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, hey. Right. 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 I guess I'll tell you, you presented, you saw the energy, and your energy was like, hey, 
welcome. What it room was, was so this? It was so welcoming to come. It was the Atlanta Black Pride Mary, um, was it a Marriott? kickoff event. Yeah, yeah. Marriott. Marriott. Mm-hmm. But I think um, I think there's an aspect that's interesting because I think you actually didn't you meet your partner through a gay guy? I did. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> I had been well because I moved here and the scene. The people that were out were mostly that I found were single gay men. Mm-hmm. And so I made a lot of really great, like, gay guy friends. I found um, a friend that I started roller skating with. Like, the level of niche gay guy friend that I found in abundance was shocking. <laughs> like, oh, I would just love someone who could go roller skating with me, talk about being gay. Bam. Like, three weeks in. Ooh, now manifest. That's yes. amazing. Manifest. Yeah. manifest. That's yes. the word I was looking manifest. for. Yes. I was going to yes. say that. Manifest. I was going to say, manifest. I feel like there's a more, like, artsy word. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You found it. <laughs> um, and then my sweet friend, I finally, after about two months here, said, listen, I don't know where the lesbians are. And as fun as it is, I do need to, to make some lady friends to be able to connect with and share my experience with. And what ended up unfolding was... The, the lady that he asked to kind of introduce me to the whole lesbian crowd mostly just introduced me to herself. So, yeah. Which was great. Yeah. Which worked out just fine. Good job. Good job. Good job. And now he is one of our close friends and, and like we have connected him to our group of lesbian mm-hmm. friends and he has brought us in to like his group of gay guys. That's awesome. And we're now like sitting in while they're doing um, RuPaul's drag queen um, drafting. Like having the time of our lives. So fun. It so you're been... doing exactly what we're all trying yeah. to achieve. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're right. living the dream. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Call me next time. Okay. We will. Yeah. We, I felt like we had a gay lesbian inception this weekend. That was stunning. First, I ended up with a group of lesbians that are younger that I don't know. And they said, let's go to the hideaway. Y'all know the highway, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So, so, yeah. Typically gay club. <laughs> right. Typically gay club. And especially more of like an older, older gay yeah. club. Mm-hmm. I was actually there last weekend. We, we walked in and some older uh, gay man said to Carmen, was like, um, what are all of you beautiful ladies doing in here? And she said, well, we're actually lesbians. And he was like, <laughs> ladies, you do know that we call this the wrinkle room. Don't you? <laughs> they do. They do. I've older never guys. heard this. I know. You're not old enough, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but then, hilariously, one of my gay guy friends, I guess all of the guys have gone out the night before and no one was going out. So he's like, what are the lesbians doing? Like, the gays are in. I need something fun to do. What That's are awesome. y'all up to? So then he joined us and it became the most random, hilarious night of like him going deeper and deeper into the uh, suburb lesbian world. And it was a time. It was lots of giggles and just the best to see that all of the gays at at, um, Hideaway welcomed all of us. And then it just was like this really beautiful, fun night. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to the Hideaway. (laughs) Yeah. I find that ultimately, I think the thing about it is I can love on you. Mm -hmm. You can love on me. And we know that there's no sexual energy. Yeah. And that's a really safe space. Yeah. Right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Really special. Because now I can love you almost without any condition. Yeah. Because you know that the reason I come, there, there may be other conditions to the friendship, let's be real, but there's already that piece is removed. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. right. All right. So, the part of the, the reason we are all together is so we could ask really stupid questions <laughs> and you guys aren't going to judge us, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, they're going to judge you. <laughs> they're going to judge you. Okay. So, all okay, right. Let me ask this question. It is very stupid and I don't know why people always go here, but we're, we're going there, right? Oh, okay. Let's go. So, I have heard, actually, did you tell me that you, somebody told you that scissoring is not a thing? No, scissoring is a thing. Thank you. Thing. I've had some, some lesbians tell me that is not a thing. That's a stereotype. And I'm no, like, it's, no, it's definitely a thing. Okay, got it. Yeah. Well, thanks for clarifying. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> it's a wonderful uh, thing. Uh, it's it's wonderful. lovely. <laughs> um, let's, let's ask, uh, well, I'll ask my one little question. Yeah. I always feel like, so in the gay world, many times people really want to know who's the guy and who's the girl, as if we fall into those, those things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we're versatile, right? And we can, like, literally, there's, you know, like... But just because you're femme doesn't mean you're a girl. No, it doesn't. Right. 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 No, and it's so right. let's also say may, that. You may, one she, may prefer... She might be ma- masculine, but that right. doesn't mean she's a man. Right? <laughs> well, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes one yeah, prefers, it's, right, it's, but it's you right. can have, like, a feminine top and a masculine bottom, mm-hmm. so they look sure. this way, but they're another way. 
is there all that variation in the lesbian community too where you're or is it like how is it it is it definitely it definitely is Mm -hmm. now for me when i first started dating women i i was dating feminine women and so i was more of the aggressive one Mm -hmm. in the relationship Mm -hmm. so when i started dating more masculine women they took over that. I was like, sit your ass down somewhere it ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Wait a second. That's awesome. And I was like, okay, baby. <laughs> whatever. Whatever you want me to but do. We just, but in that one just conversation, we just wrapped in mask, femme, submissive, dominant, mm-hmm. female, male, right? So yes. it's like all these dynamics in the gay world also play to the mm-hmm. lesbian world. It's very interesting. They do. Yeah, Remember yeah. your um, interview with, uh, was it Melissa Carter? Yeah. And there was that whole thing about the preference for a feminine woman, the preference for a masculine man, and how they both were struggling with that on different sides of the same coin. Yeah. yeah. So we know there are threads we're going to find out and experience as we go, and I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Gather round, ladies. It's Sister Circle. Welcome, Dawes. We are with Sister Circle, and we're going to talk about friendships today. So, maybe a quick toast. Cheers to our first Sister Circle. Yes. Cheers. 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 So, how do you guys feel about friendships? Like, where, like, where are you with friendships? Gosh, I, friendships matter so much to me. Mm -hmm. They are a top priority Mm -hmm. because I came from such a um, religious background. All I had were friendships for a really long time and Mm -hmm. I lived far from my family. So I didn't have a primary relationship, didn't have family. Friendships, top priority. Well, then I moved to Atlanta and started, (laughs) had one friend here. Um, And I feel like I'm completely rebuilding. I've met a ton of amazing people, but having lived somewhere for 18 years, Mm -hmm. when you're in a new place, Mm -hmm. finding those like amazing friendships that ground you and you can come to them anytime, day or night, and they've got your back. It is not. It's not easy. No, yeah. it's not easy. And friendships, um, I am learning. I can say last year I learned a lot about friendships yeah. being mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Uh, my friends back home and even my friends I went to college with, mm-hmm. we are so close. I love that. You know, and, yeah, and the they really loyalty, are. the loyalty that's there is unmatched. And so when I moved here and I started meeting friends and regardless of the years that we have on the friendship, I've always compared it to my mm-hmm. my very close friends you did. Like from college mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. And it always disappointed. Yeah. And yeah. so And I think that's where you go wrong at because you can't compare people in in friendships because like they say, you have to put people in certain categories. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's yes. right. And when it comes to friends, you never know what you're gonna get. Like mm-hmm. you never know, you know, how how long that friendship is gonna last. Right. You know, and it's hard having a friend that you're friends with for so long and then that friendship ends. Mm-hmm. It's like a breakup. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know? Yeah. It's feel. really hard. Yeah. It's really, really hard. So I think now for me, when it comes to friends, my guard is kinda up a little bit. Okay. You know? Um, but it's a desire of mine to have yeah. women friends you know it I've, I've never really had female friends okay yeah a lot of my friends have been guys got it and so having women friends is uh it's new for me it's okay it's like foreign yeah so i'm trying Seriously. to learn how, yeah i'm trying to yeah. learn how to be a friend to women that's a really <laughs> i love that that is part of your 2022 vision mm-hmm. I, what you said is key i think the categories especially yes. for lesbians dolls i don't know like where all y'all are at mm-hmm. with your friendships but this model mm-hmm. you just said tiana about the categories is where i have been helped a lot in evaluating what to expect of people mm-hmm. and for me, it looks like, where does this person fall? Especially for lesbians. Yeah. You know, you have the added element of a romantic partner. Mm. Dolls, I don't know if you have experienced this uh, in your community as well, but like, is this person someone I'm flirting with? Mm-hmm. Is this person someone I am leaning on to talk about the people I'm flirting with? Mm-hmm. Right. Am I going to go 
drive them to the airport? Mm -hmm. Would they help me move? Mm. Are they just my club friend? Do yeah. I only go out, we have fun out in the town, but I'm not going to be emotionally open yeah. to mm -hmm. this person? Yeah. But out of all of them, though, are they loyal? That's yeah. a good question. I heard a quote last year that resonated with my soul. Mm. Um, the quote was, stop expecting you mm. from other people. Facts. And Ooh. that was my biggest thing in friendships is mm. that I've always expected what I put out to receive back. Mm. So in my friendships, when I didn't receive it back, mm -hmm. I was always questioning it. Yeah. Like, is this my real friend? Yeah. Do they really have my back? Yeah. Are they jealous of me? You know, things mm -hmm. like that. And yeah. that could really affect a friendship. You have to actually just meet somebody where they are mm. and learn to, like you said, put them in that category yeah. so that you can know how to move accordingly. Yeah. And so you won't be disappointed. Once, once, you won't be disappointed once yeah. you do that. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing for me, too. I had to start telling myself I have to stop expecting me from people mm -hmm. because I give myself a lot to people mm -hmm. and I don't ever get that back in return and it's heartbreaking when you don't get it back in return yeah. so now I'm just like okay maybe let me start off with business friends okay mm -hmm. I love let's that. start let's start in this business lane first That's good. and then the business lane can possibly turn into a more you know valuable friendship mm -hmm. or something because now you know I'm, I'm in like these different women groups you know and they're very, very inspirational. Like I really, really yeah. enjoy being in one of these groups and we, we get together, we do business things. Um, it's called the Boss Thieves. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we do a lot of things together. We have a mm -hmm. book club, we um, do outings and oh, things like that. that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, really nice, I love it. And so I've met a lot of great women in this group and we're all business women. Yeah. You know, and so everybody is not out to get you. You know what I'm saying? Or Everybody's in that yeah, or compete. You right. know, everybody mm -hmm. has their own thing going on. So they don't have a reason to be jealous. Rising tide. Yes. 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 And, th and that is exactly what I need. I need a, a girlfriend that's going to uplift me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going to support me and not be jealous because I'm doing something more than you. Right. They've already established that and they have that right. as part of yeah. their identity and their confidence. Yes. And you know that they're going to be loyal and not someone that's going to take away yes. in mm -hmm. that space. Yes. Which, as you said, <clears throat> building relationships with women, if that's new for you, that's a beautiful place yeah. to start doing that. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's what I said, which is why I fit so well in this group, mm -hmm. because I've had friends that was disappointing to me. They were yeah. jealous and things like that. And I'm like, you are my friend. You're not supposed to be jealous. You're supposed to uplift me. Yeah. We're supposed to be in this thing together. We're supposed to do these things together, you know, not be jealous of one yeah. another. Yeah. And so now I feel like there's no competition. Mm -hmm. We're not in a competition with each other. A friendship is not supposed to be a competition anyway. No, it's supposed to be support. Right, support, mm -hmm. uplift, you know. But I, I feel like I get that now. I'm glad that I, you know, I was looking and I searched for friendships in the business aspect of it because that's the lane that I that I need to be in. Yeah. You know, certainly with my experience mm -hmm. with friendships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when you're relocating and from your hometown state and you don't have any family here, mm -hmm. when you get to meet people and you develop these relationships and bonds, you kind of look at them as your family. Mm -hmm. So when things go left and it doesn't work out, it, it hurts. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. It really definitely looking to them for stability and mm -hmm. support. Yeah. And you know, I I hear what you're saying about don't expect you and others, but I really do believe that the amount of like love and care that mm -hmm. you are putting out into your relationships, if you're not getting it back yeah. in an equal way, mm -hmm. that's when those relationships move in those categories, mm -hmm. right? And this is not going to be my like loyal, dependable best girlfriend. Mm -hmm. This is going to be yes. someone that maybe we chat, we're an acquaintance, mm -hmm. we help each other out mm -hmm. a couple times with business but I'm not gonna be so open and vulnerable. And it's learning sort of that dance of, mm -hmm. can I be vulnerable with this person? Mm -hmm. Can I trust them right. um, to really show up for me in life mm -hmm. when, you know, if I am having trouble with my partner, mm -hmm. is this someone that I can talk to about right. all of this? Right, You know, Like you said, categories, You that's, that falls into putting them in that certain category. Yeah. It's, it's not easy. Um, you do have those friends that 
you can go out and party with them. But when you're having issues in your relationship or just issues, period, you can't really go and talk to them yeah. about stuff because it always reflects back on them. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a car, have you ever had a friend where you go and you really having some issues and you go and have a conversation and you're trying to talk to them and they start talking about themselves? Like, <laughs> wait a minute now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute, I called you because I got problems. <laughs> like, you're not supposed to be talking about you right now. You know what you need to tell them in the future? What? They need a, a doctor dose. <laughs> Oh, they do. <laughs> something. They do. Yeah, because I, I had a friend like that and I was like, you know, we, we cannot be friends anymore. Like, because this is a, this feels one sided. They're just always taking. They're not yes. giving. Taking. That's take, the take, key take. Thing. I think that's the key thing that we can take away from this conversation at Sister Circle today is, mm -hmm. you know, you have to not only be able to to take but you have to be able to give as well. So yeah. just as much as you pour into a relationship or a friendship, you want to be poured back into. So I think that that's very important. And that makes a friendship be equal yeah. on both ends. Yeah, exactly right. And one of the best places to start is even asking yourself, am I someone that only gives mm -hmm. or only takes? And how do I be a friend that's what actually one of my close friends said her goal for 2020 was she said i want to be a better friend i mm -hmm. want to learn mm. how to show up in relationships as someone that other people want yeah. to be close mm -hmm. with and i love that she was holding herself accountable to that and she was aware yeah you know what i don't have that many close relationships because i'm not actually a good mm -hmm. close friend mm. and she turned that mirror to herself and said how can i show up better for people because if i'm putting that energy out there and I myself am vibrating at this level of loyalty, mm -hmm. dependability, mm -hmm. lack of jealousy, that's what I'm going to attract. Yeah. yeah. And then also having that accountability friend. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's what I look for too I look for that accountability friend if I'm not right if I do something wrong if I say something wrong whether it's to you or to someone else like check me yeah, yeah. you know let me know that I, I did this mm -hmm. I you were you were not right when you did that or you know if we're saying if I say I want to work out and I'm not working out you know be my friend and be like uh bitch you're not working out mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you, and I want right. you to be a good friend to you. So me as your good friend, I'm going to check your relationship. Right, yes, right, I yes, yes. True. And also, you know, I, I had to check myself too a few times when it comes to friendships because I'm like, am I really a good friend? Mm -hmm. Good question. Is that the reason why, you know, my, my friendships didn't last or I'm not friends with certain people right now? You know, am I really a good friend? Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, sometimes it makes you sit back and like reevaluate yourself. It yeah. does. And I had to sit back and reevaluate myself. And I was like, I am a good friend. <laughs> so, Dows, communication and accountability are two very, very important things when it comes to friendship. You stand by those two rules and you pour into your friends every chance that you can get and you should have a successful friendship. Absolutely. Cheers to friendship. Cheers, Cheers to, to friendship. friendship. You got this, dolls. <laughs> Ringling dingling, I think someone called for Dr. Dose. All right, so now we need to have a doctor. Who's going to be our doctor today? Paging Dr. KK. Uh, oh, KK. <laughs> All right. Ready for service. Let's see what we got the up first, here. The first lady doctor in the house. <laughs> yes, let's, let's listen to our uh, caller. As a self-identifying bisexual woman just going back out into the dating world, which is fucking frightening, I don't want a commitment. I like both men and, men and women, and I'm looking to just have fun and reconnect with my sensuality, my sexuality, my sex drive, etc. I would be open to being a unicorn, maybe, and I'm just curious what the fuck I should be expecting. I've never done this before. I'm just curious, like, how might I best prepare for a potential unicorn situation? Okay, listener, it sounds like your symptoms are a touch of curiosity, um, maybe a touch of lack of confidence. The place to start is to decide very clearly what you want what you're hoping to get out of these relationships, define that really clearly because that more than anything is going to help you know if something is working for you 
or not working for you. Secondly, I'm going to be honest and say, I am not 100% certain I know what the term unicorn means. Thank you. <laughs> the same way I was sitting here like, where do I find out? Paging, paging physician's assistant? <laughs> Does anybody all know? Yes, you that would be me. Okay. That would be me. Okay. Do you have um, to pass it or you were good? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> so a unicorn is someone, it's a bisexual woman or guy um, that enjoys the company of a couple. Um, so they engage with both of the couples, the man and the woman, basically um, just servicing them. They pleasure them, both the man and the woman. So they that's basically. Uh, no, they do. Okay, okay. But they are more so for the couple. And is yeah. it like and it's safe. Is it like the understanding that like it's safe? Like I ain't yes. gonna mess up your stuff. Yes, it's def- there's an understanding there, guys, and, and it cannot be any jealousy. No, you cannot be looking for a relationship. It's kind of like we call you when we ready to get the, you know, or just for you know. <laughs> you know, I know someone who was that. I know so someone what? who yeah. was that. Really? Uh, yeah, unicorn. Let yeah. me let me ask this: Is there? This also means there's no intention of polyamorous going on or where like they wanted to be a, a thruple uh, well it, it could, could turn, turn into it that could. Okay. it could turn into um, that but it starts out that way it starts out that where it's way. like sexual yeah with both There's yeah no jealousy mm-hmm. it's safe you're not gonna get you know you're not bringing randos in with the std chip. But that, yeah. that also sounds like but the fact that it could become mm-hmm. right so how that seems to me like a weakness in the game plan. It's like the game plan yes. is yeah. we're gonna do this. Right. The mm-hmm. game plan is mm-hmm. I'm gonna be like safe space, yep. and then all of a sudden the two girls are like, "Oh my god, I love you so much." Yeah, yes. Answer, you know? and that's yeah. how it happens. Yeah. But that's the best way for it to happen when yeah. you want it to turn into a polyamorous yeah. relationship. You Naturally. want it to be a natural flow, right? But here's also, but here's the danger too that we talked about this in season one of the dose. What happens if it turns into a thruple and then they decide to kick one of them out? We had that happen to one of our friends. I have too. Right? Ooh, I have too. It, it, can, it can get that's dangerous. It thing. can get dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. That's where circling back to original mm-hmm. prescription, start by knowing what you want and get very clear. Mm-hmm. And if you start catching feels for somebody or you can identify that one member of the couple is maybe straying from the initial boundaries, understandings that are set. Then it's time to reassess. Maybe mm-hmm. I need to back out of this and find a different, you know, couple to be a right. unicorn for, mm-hmm. or reassess yourself. Am yeah. I open to this? Am I not? Maybe yeah. my needs and wants have changed. Yeah. So I guess that's just a risk you're going to take, regardless. Yeah, yeah. it but is. You're going to take that risk. Yeah, and you have to be very transparent in those type of relationships because if you're not, you're it's gonna you're gonna run into all types of problems. You right. have to be open to talk about every single thing, no matter what it is. It has to be very uncomfortable mm-hmm. conversations in order for you to even move forward into a relationship, a relationship, relationship. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. We always say, I know we said many times, honesty is the superior love language, right? It trumps all the others, mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. sounds like that would really be required to be a unicorn. It is, and you have to communicate to be honest. Yes. But it does. It really does to me, at least. I'm not the doctor, but it does sound like she would be a good candidate because yeah. she has zero intention at all of getting into a yeah. relationship or anything serious. Yeah, just yeah. the fun thing. And she's bisexual, so she yeah. gets to, it's perfect. She gets to crave her little fun yeah. and her curiosity. The both the best oh, of both yeah. worlds. She best. She just better hope she doesn't catch any feelings. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So, listener, we love you. We support you. We wish you the best on all of your adventures and. Yeah, thanks for calling Dr. Dope. All right, Dr. Kiki. All right, KK. Kiki. <laughs> Dr. KK. KK, Dr. KK. Kiki. <laughs> it's Pillow Talk. So, Dawes, this section is called Pillow Talk. And we're going to actually talk about the things that are hmm, kind of hard to talk about. Um, things that we have issues with in our relationships as far as spending time with each other because sometimes we kind of get caught up in everyday life activities. We get caught up in work. We get caught up in businesses, kids. I mean, just a number of things that can cause you to lose focus of your relationship. And so, you know, I just feel like that's something that's very important that you have to revisit 
in your relationships quite often. Certainly if you are a couple that is very busy, you have a lot going on in your life um, and you kind of forget about each other. It's not like it's something that you do intentionally, um, but it happens. Yeah, a lot of people think that pillow talk when you're in the bedroom is just sex and intimacy and and just fun, fun, fun. But the reality of it all is we have some very, very important conversations mm-hmm. uh, when we go when we go to lay down at night and it's just her and I and we're able to just connect with each other. Yeah. Um, so one of the most important topics that we want to discuss is our time together. Yeah, it's very important. I feel like we don't spend enough time with each other, babe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we I really agree. don't. I feel like um, even though we both work from home, um, we do a lot of things together, mm-hmm. um, but we both have demanding jobs. And outside of those careers, we have businesses that we run outside of that. We also have children that we have to tend to every day, you know. And so our time that we spend with each other, it normally takes place at night after we've gotten off of work, the kids are in bed, um, and it's like... But when, when that time comes... We have to actually set aside time outside of all of that. It can't just be when we get ready to go to bed because by the time we get into bed, yeah. we are depleted. Yeah. We have nothing left in us. We just want to relax, Tired. lay down, yeah. check messages, catch up on your favorite show. So we need to make sure that during the daytime when we have that energy that we are spending time with each other and giving each other that energy that we would normally give each other. Yeah, and not even so much in the daytime, like when we're off of work Mm -hmm. and you're you're done with your day and the Mm -hmm. kids are down, or even if you don't have kids, but you're done with your day, like make it a a priority Mm -hmm. to spend that time with your partner. have conversations talk about your day talk about you know what are you going to do for the weekend talk about what do you what do you need to do to spark back up that spark yeah. in your relationship because yeah. you know it is very common it's not something that happens on purpose mm-hmm. you know it's not like you don't love your partner it's not like you don't want to spend time with your partner it's just life things happen but we have to stop making that an excuse Mm -hmm. You know, we have to really put forth that effort to, you know, spend more time, have more intimacy. And when I say intimacy, I'm not talking about sex. Um, I'm not saying that you, you know, that you have to have sex all the time because honestly, sex is really not even on the top of the radar (laughs) in our relationship anymore. But just having that intimacy um, is so important because it gives you that connection, Mm -hmm. right, to your partner. I think one thing that we need to do that we were doing before so very well is we picked a day each week in which we had date night and we rotated in in finding out what activity or where we wanted to go eat. Um, Just that alone time every week was was definitely beneficial for us. And we made some rules during that alone time. We couldn't talk about business. Nope. We couldn't talk about kids. No problems. No phones. Anything like that. It was just solely that time that we can just concentrate and focus on each other. So to all of our dials out there, We hope that you can utilize this information and we hope that if you have a partner that you're setting aside that time and that and that energy to reconnect with each other. It's so important, certainly when you've been with somebody for so many years, like you want to make sure that you do that. It's so important. So make sure you get that quality time in with each other. Yep. And it'll and it'll be the cure to a long lasting relationship. Dolls Everywhere Unite, it's the call to Kiki. All righty, congrats. That's the end of your first episode. Congrats, yes. ladies. Yay. This has been wonderful. You. Thank you, dolls, so much for tuning in. We'll remind you to love yourself, love others, and don't forget to smile. Bye. 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 See y'all Peace. next time. Love you, <laughs>